Terraforming Mars is an awesome game, and it's even better when you win. Find your spacesuits, buckle down your safety belts and get ready for the liftoff. Cause this is 10 quick tips to terraform Mars like a pro. Tip number 1. Money is king. Terraforming Mars is an engine builder, so not building an engine and going straight for the points is just like watching a movie backwards, it just doesn't make sense. To get points you have to build engines, to build engines you have to buy and make projects, to buy and make projects you have to have money. To get more money at the beginning of the game prioritize cards that give you either more income or rise your metal production. And avoid cards with far requirements that you can't fulfill. For example, if this card requires the temperature to be three steps higher than it is right now, or you're required to have two more tags than you have right now, then it's not worth it. Otherwise, you're wasting resources that you could then invest in getting more resources. Another way to go would be to raise your TR level as soon as possible. And quickest way to do it, of course, is by improving one of the three conditions. Temperature, oxygen or water. All of this saves you money, it creates an engine that gets you more and more and more money, and it really solves the problem of which card should I buy if you can just buy all of them. Tip number two, be picky. This tip is all about getting the right cards, and this goes hand in hand with our previous tip. At the beginning of the game, get cards that give you long time benefits, but at the end, get cards that give you points. Question of course is when should you start trying to get more points? It of course depends on your situation, so just see how far your engine has gotten and also take a look at all of these three conditions and how far they are to, you know, the end game. I feel like it's the 8th or 10th generation when I start to make the switch to getting more points, but you have to feel it out, it's just a approximate. So Yanis, why should you subscribe to Board Game Hangover? Because we do tops of games, you can find out about new games, you can find out new tricks for the old games, and most importantly, to support our channel. Because one small click for you is a giant leap for Board Game Hangover. Exactly, so just click that button and help us out, please. And thank you. Tip number three, get those milestones. There are so many options that you can do on your turn that it can get very overwhelming. But from all of these options, there is something you need to prioritize right away, and that is milestones. Milestones give you a lot of points, and only three will be accessible, so somebody will be left out. Be sure to get yours. Tip number four, go green. When we start counting points at the end of the game, there's always someone who goes, oh, there was the board as well, and we had to terraform and terraforming Mars. Right. And it's understandable, there's loads of cards, the most fun part of this game is building an engine and seeing it work. So of course you can forget about the board, but actually, the most points you can get is from these little pieces right here. If played optimally, forest gives you point at the end, raises oxygen, raises your TR, your city earns extra points if it's next to it, and gives you benefits that's on the spot you place it on. You might even get two plants back that you can then use to build another forest. Or if you place it next to an ocean, you can get two credits back. And that's a lot for one forest. Another quick tip is to build in the corner of the map and expand it from there. Because it's very unlikely that you will be able to build another city before somebody else does. And that means that building in the middle of the map is kind of giving away points for others. Tip number five, control the pace. The game of terraforming Mars doesn't end when somebody reaches a specific score. No, it ends when Mars is terraformed. Meaning that the temperature, oxygen and all the water is at their maximum. This is the game clock and every player can make it go slower or faster. And how you interact with this clock will directly impact your score. So do it right. So if you're playing the long game of building an engine, then getting resources and then getting points, it's in your interests to make the game go slower. If this is the case for you, move any of the conditions only if it gives you a large bonus. Otherwise, it's actually pretty dumb when you think about it. It's like sewing a brunch you're sitting on. But if you're playing the quick game of raising your TR as soon as possible, then yes, of course, raise any of the three conditions as soon as you can and try to win the game as soon as you can. So the game ends really quickly and you're ahead while other people's engines haven't even started to work yet. So whatever your game plan is, this clock will affect you. So be sure to control it as much as possible. Tip number six, to terraform or not to terraform. 
As I mentioned before, there are two ways of playing this game. One would be to build an engine, get resources, and then at the end get points, essentially the long game. But you could also play the quick game, meaning raising the terraforming rating as soon as possible and raising all the conditions so the game ends really soon. So the question is, which one is better? I would say the terraforming way, the quick way, is the easy way. It's straightforward, the game goes faster, and you get a lot of points and bonuses. So a clear winner, right? More seasoned players will argue that it's not, because a well-run and made engine will gather more points, at least in the long term. The only question is, will you have enough time? But it's much harder to do, so if you're just starting out, I would suggest that you go the terraforming way, the like quick and easy way. And then the next game, when you get the hang of it, try building a huge engine and try it that way. On a side note, the temperature track also has a lot more steps than any other conditions, so theoretically there's more points. Just saying. Tip number seven, the more the better. This game is about playing the right cards, and the more cards you have, the bigger the chance of you playing the right ones. So if you have a chance to play a card that will give you more cards each turn, then for sure play it. You will especially feel it super powerful at the late game when you can just get more and more and more cards. It's really good, trust me. Tip number eight, others loss is your gain. This isn't a really good life advice at all, but it's really good when you're terraforming Mars. When you're playing with a draft variant, which I strongly suggest you do, think about the cards you leave behind as well, and maybe if taking one of those away from your opponent is better than taking a card that you won't be able to play your next three turns anyways. Tip number nine, standard isn't bad. Yes, standard projects are overpriced, but it doesn't mean they're bad. If you can play them at the right time, for example, if you can change its effect, raising a temperature and then placing an ocean tile and then getting resources, then it's a great move. A pro tip would be to buy cities at the end of the game from standard projects, because what you're gonna do with all that money anyways, plus it's a great way to get those last points at the end. Tip number 10, time it right. In your actions, you can either do one action, two actions, or skip the rest of the generation. And it's really important that you time it right. Meaning if it's your turn and somebody after you could steal a milestone you're looking at, be sure to get it first, because those five points are really, really important. Another good example actually would be doing the opposite. In your turn, doing just one action to let somebody else raise the temperature, and then when again it's your turn, you can raise it and get the bonus as well. Always play asteroid card just before somebody can place their plans, so you can ruin their plans. It all depends on the situation, so always see what you have, see what other players have, and then make your choices about the moves you should make. And that's it. 10 quick tips to terraform Mars like a pro. We really appreciate everybody who subscribes to our channel, it really helps us to know it's worth making these videos and it kind of just makes us happy. So thank you and if you haven't yet subscribed please consider doing so, it helps a lot. I'll see you in the next one.